Greetings! I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm building these 15mm scale Flames of War German Sturm Tigers, which some of you have correctly guessed were coming next after seeing the box in my previous video. The back of the box has a painted example, a platoon organisation chart, and a little bit of prototype information. This thing fired 280kg shells. That's madness! Let's look inside the box. The resin hulls are really quite nice. The details are very good and everything is crisp and well cast. It looks very much what you would expect a Sturm Tiger to look like. Something I really like is that both hulls are slightly different. One hull is obviously designed to have the crew loading it and thus has a deeper recess for the top hatch. It also has chunks of Zimmeret missing and the pistol ports are open. Subtle but nice. I normally complain about Battlefront's metal tracks, but as far as metal tracks go these are pretty decent. The detail on them is fairly clear and they should look pretty good when they're painted. The front and rear guards are reasonable. The side skirts, while mostly bent, were reasonable and easily straightened. The gun is quite well cast, as is the top hatch. The hull MGs weren't quite as good. The rear hatch is pretty good and it comes with the tip of a shell that can be inserted into the gun. Here's the loading crane, which is also not bad. And the crew figures. They're okay compared to some other Battlefront metal figures, but I'm not crazy about them and will unfortunately most likely leave them off. And here's the shell they would be loading. You can see why a crane is included. Also included are these decals. The numbers look good, but the crosses are poor and printed a little bit off centre. I'll most likely use Plastic Soldier Company decals that I've used on other German tanks. Right, let's get to work. I started by cleaning up the tracks with a file. They didn't need a lot of work, mostly just removing a couple of bumps from mould vents. They are keyed so they only fit on the correct side of the hull, but they do slip back and forth a little bit, so do be careful. Next, glue the tracks into position. I slide them around a little bit to spread the glue in hopes of achieving a better bond. Next, I added the comically huge gun. It only needed a little bit of cleanup before being glued into place. I need to learn how to keep these things in frame when I make the video. I chose to add the shell tip to one of my Sturm Tigers. Simply put some glue inside the barrel and very carefully put the piece in. I used a knife to adjust its positioning. I quite like this extra little detail. Now to the back of the superstructure where we attach this hatch. It only needed a little bit of filing and then it was ready to be glued in. It was a bit of a tight fit so I placed it and then used my knife to make adjustments. This part only goes on one hull. The other hull had a hatch moulded on which I found a little bit strange. Next I added the hull machine gun. This circle cast into the hull here is the positioning guide for the part. Simply glue it into place. The loading hatch can then be glued into place. This part only needed a gentle filing along the edges before being placed. The smaller part of the hatch goes towards the rear of the Sturm Tiger. Of course, that step would be done differently if you were going to model the crew loading the tank. Next I add the crane. It did need a little bit of gentle filing before being attached. It can then be glued into the convenient mounting bracket on the back of the superstructure. I did spend a lot of time umming and ahhing over adding the loading crew or not. It would only be a little bit more effort to add the parts, but I didn't feel the crew figures were quite good enough and would detract from the model when it was painted. Now onto the final details, that being the mud guards and side skirts. The mud guards are alright, though they were a little bit of a pain to get off the sprue without bending them. They do need a little bit of filing before being attached, but nothing too excessive. Simply add a little bit of glue to the sides and place them like so. It can be a little bit tricky to get them lined up properly, patience is required. The rear guards are a little bit easier to apply. There's a little flat space to guide their positioning, and they can simply be glued on. Now for the side skirts. Once you straighten these out you could simply glue them on, but I wanted damaged and missing skirts. These can actually be cut with a knife. Just apply firm pressure and it should cut. Obviously don't use a good knife for this. File the end up and it's ready for additional beatings. For this I used some small flat pliers and bent the corners. I also partially cut through the joint between skirt plates and bent those corners up too. This is a pretty simple step, but I think it adds a lot. Once it looks sufficiently beaten and has been straightened out again, it's ready to be glued on. You'll probably find tweezers to be very useful for this step. The skirts and guards can be attached or not however you like. I've seen a lot of pictures of Sturm Tigers with them mashed up or missing completely. I wanted to omit the front guards but felt the join between the track and hull part was too visible and didn't look good. The front guards hide that. There we have it, a finished pair of Sturm Tigers ready to obliterate entire city blocks with their very sensible and not at all silly guns. I'm really pleased to have these as part of my increasingly mighty German Flames of War army. I really quite like this kit. It's one of the better resin and metal offerings I've seen from Battlefront lately. For those wanting another assembly guide, there is one available on flamesofwar.com with lots of pictures. I'll link it in the description below. 
The parts, for the most part, were very well cast and nicely detailed, though I didn't much like the Hull MGs and really wish the crew figures were better. Everything fit together pretty well and there was only a minimal amount of work and time needed in assembly. In fact, I spent more time debating with myself whether or not to model one of the tanks being loaded than I did on the actual build. I really do like the option to model one of the Sturm Tigers being loaded. If only the crew looked a little bit better. If they ever re-release these in plastic, I will snap them up and build them with the loading option. Battlefront's plastic figures do seem a lot better than their metal ones. Overall though, this is a really nice kit and I think it will look even better once it's painted. It has been added to the ever-growing painting list. I hope this video has been helpful or interesting for you. I'd love to see any comments you have below. I'm pretty sure this time that I haven't included any unintentional spoilers, though I will give you imaginary internet points if you do guess what's next. Thanks for watching. Farewell.